We're back in Hawkins with our D&D playing, Demogorgon slaying, government dodging favorites in Stranger Things season four. And man, it feels good to be back with our old friends and also like a bajillion new characters. At first I was like, hey, Duffer Brothers, this is the last season, we don't need all these newbies, but I'm actually loving them as an addition. So let's talk the newcomers to the final season of Stranger Things. And of course, there's spoilers ahead. I'm Anna Rumor and this is Pop Culture Social Call. I didn't expect to love Eddie Munson as much as I do, but when the outrageous leader of Hawkins High's Hellfire Club revealed he had a heart of gold in episode one during his interaction with Chrissy, I was pretty sold. Also, who doesn't love someone who's that passionate about D&D? I mean, come on, roll for charisma. Now, if the actor Joseph Quinn looks familiar, you might recognize him from HBO's miniseries, Catherine the Great, where he played Helen Mirren's son. I mean, lucky duck. He also played a Stark soldier in season seven of Game of Thrones, so there's that. Next up, we have Argyle, who quickly became a contender for one of my favorite Stranger Things characters of all time when he called Jonathan Mopey Dick. Now, Argyle's Jonathan's new stoner bestie, and he just seems like a good guy. He cracks me up. Plus, he's a pizza delivery boy. I mean, he's got access to pizza. Who doesn't want that in a bestie? You know who I don't want as a BFF? Jason Carver. He's like the quintessential jock jerk of Hawkins High. Yeah, obviously it's tough when his girlfriend Chrissy is like brutally murdered by paranormal forces, but planning to take in Eddie as a prime suspect with like bats and crowbars? Not cool. He's kind of like who we thought Steve would be before Steve turned out to be so cool, and that is a tool. Oh, also the actor, Mason Dye, he was in Amazon Prime's Bosch and MTV's Teen Wolf, if he looks familiar, and also the Flowers in the Attic remake on Lifetime. All right, let's hop across the pond to the wrong side of the Iron Curtain and meet Dmitry Antonov, basically Hopper's closest thing he's got to a friend at this point. Dmitry's a corrupt prison guard with a teenage son who doesn't appreciate him, and believe it or not, he makes that very funny and charming. Now, if he looks familiar, it's because we've got another Game of Thrones alum on our hands. Tom Valesha played Jack and Hagar. I mean, I guess it's a little ironic if you recognize a faceless man. Also on the Russian side is Yuri, a wisecracking pilot who was supposed to give Hopper a lift out of Kamchatka, but we find out in episode four, he's double-crossed him. Definitely not winning new favorite character. Finally, we have the most important new character of a season, and I can't say this enough, spoilers ahead. When we first meet Peter, the Hawkins lab attendant seems so sweet, but he's hiding the darkest secret of a season. Now we know and love Eleven, but it turns out that Peter is Henry, and Henry is number one, and his telekinetic powers have a much more homicidal vibe to them. While he originally thought Eleven could help him free his power so he could exterminate the human race, Peter turns on her when she declines, resulting in him basically getting blasted into the upside down. Now, unfortunately, that just transforms him into the monstrous Vecna and ooh baby, it is on. What a way to go out. I am loving season four of Stranger Things and I hope you are too. And I'm also curious which new character you think is the best addition. Let me know in the comments, like and subscribe while you're there. Then head over to popculture.com for the latest in entertainment news. Till next time, I'm Anna Rumor and this is Pop Culture Social Call.